Let us pray. Set our hearts aflame, O Lord, with the spirit of your charity, we pray, that we may always think thoughts worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you sincerely in our brothers and sisters. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Be Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. He dawns through the darkness, a light for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. Lavishly he gives to the poor, his generosity shall endure forever, his horn shall be exalted in glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king, marching into battle, would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
the theological virtues, faith, hope, and love or charity. And as Paul tells us, love is the greatest of these. Faith is, first of all, freely given to us in our baptism. All three of these theological virtues are, but they're all very interconnected with each other. And faith, if we nourish that faith, even though it's a free gift, it just can't sit idle. We have to cooperate with it. And if we allow that faith to grow in our lives, it leads us to hope. Hope is our belief in the promise, the promise with a capital P, the promise that comes from the very words or mouth of Jesus himself, the promise to eternal life, that we will share one day life with him. And with that comes love, because that's what leads us then to his kingdom loving. And Paul says that is the greatest of these three. Now the words of our Lord today sound a little abrupt or certainly harsh. Hating father, mother, sister, brother, even one's own life. Jesus again is using a rabbinical style of preaching to to get the listener's attention, and he certainly does get it when he uses words like those. So he's not saying that we must literally hate, but what he's really saying is that there's great weight and very serious ramifications if we want to be his follower, his disciple. In other words, faith which leads us to hope and is translated in our love of God and of one another, that can't happen unless it's the number one priority of our lives. It should be there even before we think of eating or drinking or sleeping or anything else. And yet we know how difficult that can be in a world of distractions, which is also why Jesus says we must renounce all our possessions as well. He knows that we just can't get rid of everything that's material in our lives. We certainly need things to exist and to flourish in this life. But he's also once again shocking us into thinking and asking ourselves, do the possessions own us or do we own the possessions? And again, if they own us, there will be a serious jeopardy of our faith. Our faith will be seriously jeopardized because those distractions can easily cloud our vision. And as in our weak human nature, as it oftentimes operates, affected by the effects of original sin, we become very easily distracted and deluded, and then we start putting off what needs to be done right now, today. The priority must be our faith, and we must trust in the promise, and we must translate all that in our actions of love, of charity. And so the challenge is always there before us as we struggle through this life as church militant. We hope to someday share the lot of saints and glory in heaven in the church triumphant. So let us allow ourselves to be filled with God's grace because it's God's grace that gives us the strength to overcome everything that gets in the way of God. with trust and total reliance on God's love and care for us, let us offer him our prayers of petition. 
for all the clergy and leaders in the church. May they always be open to making the difficult decisions for the sake of leading others to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all civil leaders, may they work for the benefit of the common good and be willing to sacrifice on behalf of their constituents to act in the cause of justice and peace. Let us pray. For the sick and disadvantaged in our society, may they experience the benefits of our sacrifices on their behalf. Let us pray. For our parish community, may we be examples to one another of wholehearted dedication to Jesus and his message. Let us pray. For all the faithful departed, especially in this Mass, we remember the repose of the soul of Bill Martin and all who have served to defend liberty and freedom to worship the one true God. May they all now rest in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Creator and life-giving God, we trust in your love and willingness to hear and grant our petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 